So, I made it through the uh, course material on shelling. Um, great stuff. Uh, I love it. Um, I, I love the whole worldview. I love the whole... Um, the whole uh, feeling of continuity that he infuses throughout his philosophy, the way he sees the world as a unity that um, is differentiated within itself, but um, at the same time preserves its its relationship and continuity with all other things. Um, because things are a manifestation of opposing poli polarities, uh, forces, um, they are all uh, the the result of the underlying processes of nature, um, of, you know, expansion and contraction, finding this temporary equilibrium like an eddy in the stream of the cosmos, um, finding form for a time before dissolving back into the, the flow of existence. Anyway, um, great stuff. Um, as a part of the term paper, I'm chosen, to, I've chosen to write a comparison of Schelling's philosophy and the mathematical cosmologist Brian Swim. Uh, both have a, uh, a view of the universe that is, that is anchored uh, into nature as the fundamental reference point. Um, both see nature as something well, I don't know, something, as foundational to all of existence. Swim and Schelling share um, a basic view uh, of the world, although their, their actual uh, scientific understanding is, of course, very different because they're separated by, you know, 200 years. So, so Swim has a up-to-date nuanced view of cosmological development, which includes things like, you know, galaxies and black holes and planetary formation and the evolution of life and genetics and all sorts of things like this. Quantum physics, all that. It's, it, that's all in Swim's philo uh, philosophy, in Swim's work. Um, he's not a philosopher, per se. Um, for Schelling, of course, uh, when he's writing, uh, it's God, 1800. So his his science is is lacking the uh, 200 years of of work and observation uh, that contributed to the nuanced view that Swim has. So Schelling's expression is in principle more than anything else. Uh, he is talking about the 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 principles and the and the patterns that, it, that, that exist and, and how, they, uh, how they manifest things um, in a very kind of like high level abstract way. When you drill down into his explanations of exactly how all this happens, it's pretty clear that there's not a lot of research on that yet. He's trying to figure it out. He's proposing theories which are, you know, well formulated, but, you know, lacking 200 years of research <laughs> compared to the modern ones. Um, so, uh, the major contribution that Schelling has to make to the modern world is really his overall worldview. It, it retains its value, even though the scientific findings have evolved dramatically. I mean, it's important to remember that the, the world that Schelling inhabited, they didn't even know there was a Milky Way. They didn't know there was a galaxy. They knew there was a solar system. They didn't know that uh, with, with any degree of certainty that plants and animals evolved over time. Uh, Darwin had not yet formulated his theory of evolution. There was not yet a mechanism for natural selection that had, you know, had been identified. So his work is highly speculative, um, but he did his homework and he, 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 you know, vigorously studied the cutting edge science of his time, but the cutting edge science of his time was, you know, 1800 science so there was still there was still a lot that needed to be done um, so anyway writing this paper is a lot of fun uh, the the 
other part of the paper besides simply comparing and contrasting, you know, shelling to swim is to is I categorize them both as not formal ecologists, but functional ecologists. And I categorize them that way because in grounding their worldviews in the natural world, um, they attribute that world with uh, foundational value for everything. The natural world is where value comes from. It is the ground of being. And because of that, uh, it's inherently ecological because ecological views uh, really just have to do with a, a relation of humanity to, you know, the earth or the cosmos, if you will. Um, ecology, you know, oikos means home and, <laughs> uh, and that, and what zoikos means life in, in Greek, I believe. Um, anyway, um, but essentially uh, the ecology means the house of life. So it's the study of life and how it operates in relation to all other things. So to ground your metaphysics in the natural world is to be ecological in your, uh, in your, you know, worldview. So I see both shelling and swim, although one's a philosopher and one's a mathematical cosmologist, I see them both as functionally ecological in their thinking. Um, and because of that, it has this tremendous value for the current world because we have this, this split, this alienation, this separation from, um, from the human world to the natural world. You know, we're conscious and then nature, well, that's just, you know, blind instinct or, you know, whatever, genetic expression. Um, uh, and then there's the rocks, you know, what are rocks? Rocks are dumb. They're just stuff, right? That's, that's still our worldview, uh, at least at the popular level, uh, at the scientific level, of course, we've evolved well beyond that, but the popular view has not caught up and why it is, and, uh, why that matters is because the popular view is the one that drives politics and it's the one that drives decisions at the local and international level. Um, and if for the popular view, if the way that we see the world is that way, then we are going to treat the world as if it has no value, as if it, it isn't actually necessary. It's just a place where we go get things to do stuff with. Essentially, it's just a, a, a collection of parts that we get to rearrange in any way we think is best. So, um, so shelling and, and swim uh, have a worldview that goes against that current and it unites the good of the human with the with the good of nature as a whole um, the good of the earth community I mean that's really where we need to get to is this this understanding of of the human as, as a participant in the community of earth and when I say the community of earth it sounds a little sentimental maybe but really what it means is uh, it's, it's that we're in relationship to all the things that live here with us. That's all it means. And it's really undeniable. I mean, we breathe the air produced from the trees and are a part of the nitrogen cycle and, you know, the water cycle. I mean, just look at your, you know, <laughs> geophysical sciences and it's pretty obvious that, that humans are in relationship to, you know, the entire, you know, natural world. So the, um the worldview that we hold has to evolve. Um, we are uh, numerous enough and have technology that is powerful enough that we're having a serious impact on the planet, the place where we live, um, the earth community. And we need to, we need to reconsider that impact and, and decide whether it's, you know, what we think are, are, are really self beneficial activities as in like, you know, clear cutting forests and polluting the oceans and all these things, things we think are, are, you know, for our good, if they really are for our good in the long run, because ultimately our good is tied up with the thing that sustains us, which is our natural environment. And if we're destroying that, then we are, you know, we're destroying ourselves in the long run. So, um, to tie it all it back, um, Shelling and Swim uh, have a lot of similarities between their work, um, which I find fascinating to explore in this paper. I believe they are both ecological because they ground their systems in the processes of nature themselves. Um, and they do so in a way that isn't mechanistic. They, they recognize the inherent value of nature and the, the consciousness, the, the, the uh, spirit may not be the right word just because it tends to turn people off, but 
you know, in this case, it may be appropriate. The fact that there is some dimension to nature that is extraordinarily meaningful in a fundamental way, um, that, in my opinion, can be called, you know, a spiritual or a spirit-oriented view because, uh, you know, in its origin, spirit just means life, you know, so it's life-oriented. So a spiritual view in a certain way is, is oriented around life. And both of these, uh, both Schelling and Swim have a, a, a life-oriented view. So anyways, I'm working on the paper and I'll come back and do another uh, video post when it's done. Um, have a great day.